This morning, a smart car tried to drive into the side of my car twice. I got stuck in slow moving traffic behind a lorry going at 30 miles an hour the entire way uh, through the latter end of the dual carriageway. I met a horse rider and a tractor on what was a rather small road and just had to hope for the best. But I followed my father's advice. Don't reverse, don't slow down. Just go and eventually a gap will open up. Luckily I was going slowly. Anyway, hi everyone. My name is Charlie and today we have a review of Driven by Dane Cobain. This is the first book in the Lightfold series, which I believe is going to be bringing cosy crime into the modern day. By cosy crime, I mean we're talking like the golden age of crime here. You're talking your Agatha Christie and the other people in that generation, because I'm just too tired to think of what the names are right now. Anyway, in this first book, you have a modern day locked room mystery. If you don't know, someone's been killed in a room, they're the only person in that room, but the door was locked from the inside. Here we have a woman is killed by a driverless car. And then naturally we have the huge plot behind that. You have Lightfold, the private detective, and he advertises for an assistant, and he gets Miley, I believe. Well, I was pronouncing it Miley. Um, I was going to ask Dane about the name, but then one day, whilst I was reading this book, I went onto Twitter, and I saw that Dane had said that he likes seeing people struggle over difficult names, and I thought, well, this is going to be the perfect time to do that. This makes perfect sense as to how he came up with all of the names. And so I just thought, let's entertain him. Let's pronounce these names how we've been pronouncing them and probably getting them all wrong in the process. Now, if you didn't know this about me, I'm quite the fan of crime fiction. I was practically raised on Agatha Christie. It's one of those things that was always on at my nan's house. My mum's always had a big thing for Miss Marple. Both my mum and my nan really like Margaret Rutherford's rendition of Miss Marple. And my mother still listens to the theme music in the shower. Just a little bit, a tidbit of information there. Um, I've enjoyed listening to crime dramas on the radio. I have read a great number of crime novels over the years. Yes, I do have a soft spot for the golden age of crime fiction, but I definitely think that bringing it into the modern day is a good thing to do, simply because I'm pretty confident that at the time, a lot of cr when Agatha Christie was writing, wasn't it to make the middle classes feel secure, which is why usually it was a poor member of class or caste who was the um, murderer. So, because it was during times of war, times of turmoil, and it was to say to readers, to smart people, don't worry about it, everything's okay, poor people are still evil. Now, whilst I appreciate the golden age of crime, I really wanted a book set in a modern setting. Now, I know that you get that with some of the Constable and Robinson books, like Agatha Raisin and that sort of thing. Um, but we're still getting older characters and that's that's not a bad thing but we're still getting a very stylized view of what that is supposed to be like and what I liked here is taking some of the the that Dane did was taking some of the themes and motifs from popular crime fiction and I mean it's still a crime novel but and using them in this modern setting now Lightfold and Miley O'Hara throughout the book I, I know that, well, I think, from my own thinking, it was supposed to be a bit similar to Agatha Christie and all that. Personally, I got quite a feeling of the Paul Temple radio plays, which was brilliant. I was quite 
glad to see that myself, whether or not Dane intended that to be the intention. I don't know. Intended the intention? I don't know. It's 8 o'clock in the morning. I've not had a cup of tea. Um, <coughs> as for the mystery, did I solve it? No. Did I think it was going to end up being what it was? No. Did I really like the final few scenes in which we found out who the killer was? Yes. Did they throw back to Poirot on the television? Yes. Did I enjoy it? Yes. I also think that this is... One of those things that could be put on the television at Christmas. It's so much like a crime caper and that final scene, uh, well it's not it's not the final scene but it's close to the final scene that I think that it worked exceptionally well. Now I have to look because I'm very sorry Dane, I did happen to forget the name of your murder victim. Donna, I should have remembered that, Donna. Donna, you know, the character we all missed from Emmerdale. Um, yes, yeah, so Donna was murdered. And the poor girl was surrounded by a right bunch of pillocks, is all I can say. Naturally, all of these people who surrounding her all had a motive for her murder, because they were all dicks. Um, I like the pace with which Dane writes as well. I think that it really lends itself well to the narrative. I like the relationship that Lightfold has with people and I look forward to more books going into this relationship between Lightfold and those characters and learning more of the backstory because he's definitely one of these interesting figures. Um, years ago, back when I was first reading about how to write a crime novel, it said you have to have an, in an interesting detective. He doesn't necessarily have to be like Morse with is drinking whiskey. Um, but I think it stands to reason that you've always got to have strong characters, and these characters, for me, definitely are strong characters. And so I'm just looking to see if the book's going to tell me anything more that I want to say, because we have a modern book. We have characters with a love of crosswords, which really made me smile, and I liked how they worked out puzzles together as like some sort of suggestion of the way that they were going to solve crimes together. I like the subplots within this book and yes I want to know more about these characters outside of the Xbox and outside of... I just need to know more. I think there were some Agatha Christie-esque names within here. Um, I will not pronounce them because it will make folk laugh if I were to try to. Um, there were people talk, there was, there was like talk of technology in here and as a technophobe such as I, it was very difficult to get my head around. And yes, anyway, we, if you couldn't tell, I actually quite liked this book. I don't think I did it justice here in this review. However, if you do want a pacey crime novel taking aspects of the golden age of crime fiction and bringing them into a more modern setting, if you want to support an indie writer, then please go and read Driven by Dane Cobain. Also, if you didn't know, as I feel like I should mention, Dane does have a booktube channel. I'll try and leave links somewhere. As we all know, I'm not the best at that, but I will try and remember. And, like, let's just say it, let's just say it because he said it about my book. Formatting's good. Formatting's quite great for an indie book. Sometimes independent authors frustrate you because they don't go to that little bit of extra effort. But, you know, when it's nice, when it's appealing to the eye, it makes for a good read. And also, yeah, I'm just really glad to have had a chance to read this. I mean, I've absolutely no idea about London, so... I don't know whether that bit aspect was correct. I'm not I'm not sure anything about London. If it had been like set somewhere up north, it might have made me smile a bit more. But yes. Get out there. Find Driven by Dane Cobain. Read about the technology rising up and taking us all down. This isn't true. That's not what this book is about. I just have nightmares about autonomous cars.
Anyway, if you have read this book, please feel free to share your spoiler-free comments in the comments. Um, please go over and take a look at Dane's channel. I hope you enjoyed this video, and until next time, that is all.